Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In Apostle Michael Orokpo's transformative message, How to Win All Battles, we uncover the secrets to victorious living. Victory begins on our knees, where prayer fuels our strength. Arm yourself with the Word of God, your ultimate weapon. Faith breaks every chain, setting us free to conquer. Praise fortifies our spirit, bringing divine intervention. Embrace these divine strategies and walk in perpetual victory. May be done by the name of thy son Jesus. And in Acts 4.33, he said with great power, with great power, God gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus and great grace was upon them. With great power, if there is no great power, there can be no great witness. Nobody's helped without power. I decree over you tonight, everything making you powerless goes down now. See, we must hunger and thirst for power. See, well, sometimes when I look at our generation, we have not seen anything and we are talking. Somebody will come and say, better pursue character. All this power, power. Have we seen power? I'm not against character. I'm an advocate of character. Jesus manifested character for 30 years before power. But wait a minute. Have you seen power? Which power have you seen? Joshua 10 verse 12. Israel was fighting in war and Joshua stood in the public. Stretch forth his hand. Let the sun remain upon the mountains of Ajalo. Let the moon remain upon the valley of Gibeon. And he said the sun did not make haste to go down. That is power. The ability to rule the constellation. Have we seen power? Moses stretched his rod and the Red Sea parted. And the Bible said in Hebrews 11 verse 11. It said by faith they walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. Which the Egyptians are saying to do. Perished. That's power. Have we seen power? Jesus showed up in the grave of Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, he that was dead came back to life. That is power. Jesus carried five loaves and two fish, broke them, take, give them. Five thousand men were fed. That is power. Our generation have not seen power. He said, time will fail me to speak of Gideon, to speak of Barak, of Jephthah, of Samson, of David and the prophet who through faith subdued kingdoms obtain promises, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, quite the violence of fire. Weak men were made valiant in battle and they put to flight the armies of the alien. That is power. We have not seen power. We need to cry for dimensions of power that are eternal. A generation hungry to see the hand of God must appear again. He said in Exodus 3 verse 20, I will stretch forth my hand and strike Egypt with all of my sons and my wonders. Then Pharaoh will let you go. And Moses showed up and told Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 12 verse 12, and God walked through Egypt and judged the cause of Egypt and they let Israel go. That is power. Once again, for the kings, 
for the ancients to arise, for the princes to arise, for the prophets to arise. Ali Ali O, Ali O, Ali Ali O, Ali O, Ali Ali O, Ali Ali O, Ali O. I decree over you everything making your life a mockery they go down now sit down for a moment ah i'm burdened too many people need help and we appear powerless in the face of crisis a new species must rise special men who carry the genuine power of God when my son my second son was born I looked at him in the face and I said wow so if there was no power this one too would have been called a miscarriage can you imagine that's how ordinations are wasted. Amniotic fluid is too much. How? Baby is about to come out premature. How? Imagine if the power of God didn't go to work. You will not lose anything anymore. Let's step down a little so that we can join it that we can join you need power to help others and trust me many need help that's why we won't rest until we have power this thing is not about selfishness it's about kingdom it's about purpose that's why you need it you need power many will die if you have no power many will suffer if you have no power this is why God is empowering us our power is the liberty for many who are oppressed even creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god who are the sons of god they are those who carry the power of the holy ghost the sixth purpose of power is for leadership and the ability to give direction god wanted a leader to deliver israel what he needed was not lecture notes he said Moses Exodus 3 from verse 1 to 7 came to Horeb the mountain of God there he saw a bush burning that was not consumed and he said I will turn to see this great sight and he heard a voice take off thy sandals he said where you are standing is holy ground and from that encounter God began to introduce him to power drop thy rod he dropped the rod he became a serpent pick it by the tail Put your hand in between your, your navel. He put it inside. Brought it out. It was leprous. Put it again. He put it. Brought it out. It became normal. Pour water on the ground. It became blood. He said, now go tell them. I am that I am have sent you. You can't lead people without power. Otherwise, they'll become victims. And casualties of war. When they were walking through the wilderness. Many nations came against them. But there was power to deliver they had many needs there was power to provide he said when he led them out of the wilderness he said he caused the rock to bring out water for them he cleaved the rock also the waters gushed out they needed food in the wilderness manna showed up they needed meat quails came even the clothes they wore the bible said they grew with it their sandals did not weary out there was a power sustaining it and he said there was none feeble amongst their tribes. They would have all perished in the wilderness. Do you know the nations that fought them? Go and read about the kingdom of the Amorites. When the Bible spoke about Sihon, the king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan. Go and read about the people of Bashan. The Bible says some of them were like leopards. Some of them were beastly. The, the Bible called them beastly men. A man shows up like a tiger. Those are the kind of men that come to work. You need power. When they sent spies to look at the
the promised land. The Bible said, the spies that analyzed based on fact, say we were like grasshoppers before them. They were not lying. The only problem was that God said they didn't analyze by faith. They analyzed fact and truly they were like grasshoppers. But there was something they carried that made them subdue their enemies. Don't attempt to lead people when you have no power. If you don't die, they will die. You need power for leadership. And finally, you need power to exercise dominion. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to step upon serpents and scorpions and upon every deadly thing and none shall by any means hurt thee. Without power, there can be no dominion. This is why you need power. And you need a lot of power. Your ordination depends on it. Accessing your heritage depends on it. Preserving what God has given to you depends on it. Making sustainable impact depends on it. Influencing your generation depends on it. Helping others depends on it. Leadership depends on it and dominion depends on it I will not live without power go and read your Bible everybody who made impact made impact by power and you too will go by power you will go by power lower that volume I want to, to calm down a little so that we can cover some mileage oh. my God something is brewing in my spirit It's like a hurricane. And I sense a witness now. Most of you will leave this meeting. Something will come on you. Something will walk with you. Mantles will be released upon you. next 15 minutes so let me let me revert to a teaching mode there are five kinds of power that anybody who will live victoriously must have the first is spiritual power write it down the second is mental power the third is economic or financial power the fourth is relational power and the fifth is governmental power in the case of governmental power is either you are enthroned or you are vitally connected to somebody who is enthroned and i'll deal with it when i come there please if you will have all round victory you need to possess these five kinds of power. Let's take it one after the other. I've shown you the significances of power. Any and all of these powers can generate any of those significances. That's why I grouped the significance together. Now let me show you how to access these five dimensions of power because you will need it spiritual power there are three basic ways of accessing spiritual power the first is revelation the second is consciousness and the third is consecration anybody that has these three things will walk in spiritual power you must have a revelation of who your God is. You must have a revelation of what your God has done for you. And you must have a revelation of who your God has made you. 
these are the three categories of revelations you must have to walk in power you must have a revelation of who your god is you must have a revelation of what your god has done for you and you must have a revelation of who your god has made you if you don't have any of these three revelations forget about power daniel 11 32 he said they that do know their god he said they shall be strong and do exploit so if you don't know your god you will not walk in power and i've taken time here to teach you exhaustively the dimensions of god from his essential dimensions to his moral dimensions and even his offices we have taught here that god is eternal god is unchangeable god is self-existent god is omnipotent god is omniscient god is omnipresent and god is omnibenevolent as his essential attributes that's who he is and there's none who possess all of these qualities we have also taught here concerning god's moral attributes that god is holy that god is love that god is righteous and that god is faithful and we have also taught from the offices of god that god is creator and as creator he has power to produce something out of nothing as a matter of fact everything out of nothing and we have also taught that god is the author of life those are his offices and so everyone who knows who god is can build certain level of assurance in god i gave you illustration of how david said he said the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restored my soul and he kept analyzing and analyzing and he said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why for thou art with me he knows god is omnipresent anywhere he is god is there he said even in the presence of my enemies my cup runneth over my enemies don't have to die for me to succeed they will be present and they will be ineffective as far as my ordination is concerned why was he saying that because he knew who his god was that's why he began from psalm 23 verse 1 the lord is my shepherd so you must know who your god is for you to walk in power you need that revelation and then you need to know what your god has done for you if you don't know what your god has done for you if you don't know what your god has given to you you will still walk in lack and deficiency second peter 1 verse 3 and 4 it says according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness all things not some all things that means anything you need for life and godliness has already been provided he said but it is through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and to virtue so the reason some are not working in power is because they don't know what god has given to them so they are asking for what they already have and if you ask for what you already have is a sign that you don't know you have it so you will walk in lack first corinthians chapter 3 verse 21 it says all things are yours all things are yours so we don't beg anymore we rule because we are in possession of all things we are not people who should lack god has given us all things paul was speaking about this matter in romans 8 32 he said if he did not withhold his only begotten son but freely gave him for us how shall he not with him give us all things so as far as paul was concerned we don't have need for anything anything we desire we bring it forth that's why i said i know how to abound and i know how to abase i can do all things through christ which strengthens me he knows what he has too many christians don't know what they have have you been in that place before where you have comb in your hand and you are looking for it and you are angry with everybody you are not aware that you have it and if you don't know you have it you will be frustrated seeking what you already have this is why the gospel must be taught christians must know that they have the anointing that jesus had the bible said in acts 10 38 jesus was anointed with the holy ghost and power in acts 1 8 he said you and i were anointed with the holy ghost and power the bible taught also that the same faith that jesus has is the faith that we have galatians 2 20 i have the faith of the son of god the bible also taught that the same life that jesus has is the same life you and i have i'm just showing you the things god has given to you already 
First John 5 verse 11 to 13 he said God has given unto us eternal life he said this is the record God has given unto us eternal life and he said this life is in the son whoever has the son has life these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life so the life Jesus had is the same life I have now my life will not be edited for all eternity when the rapture takes place this body will be changed but the life remains the same because it's the life of Jesus that is in you now how can you fail and that's not all glory to God you have the anointing of Jesus you have the faith of Jesus you have the life of Jesus and every other thing that Jesus has you have it because Christ in you is the hope of glory you need to know what you have in God if you have all of that is it material things that will be a challenge no he has given you the things that really matter do you know you have the righteousness of Christ you don't have your own righteousness you have the righteousness of Jesus living righteous is to practice the righteousness of Christ the Bible said in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 he made him that was without sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus and in Romans 5 17 he said that he has given us the gift of righteousness for what reason that we may reign in life but believers who have the anointing of Jesus the faith of Jesus the life of Jesus the righteousness of Jesus are still walking with the mentality of powerlessness what did Jesus have that you don't have that makes you feel you cannot do what Jesus did Jesus himself speaking in John 14 12 he said the works that I do he said you shall do also and greater works than this shall you do why was he saying that because everything he has you have and when he was leaving the earth even his name he gave you he said in my name cast out devils he credited his name to you he gave you his name as a gift so you don't lack anything the problem is that you don't know what you have so you can have a gun and be running from somebody who has a stick and that's the condition of many Christians and then you need to know the revelation of who God has made you oh man I am an ambassador of Christ I'm a high commissioner here I'm not a citizen of earth I see people fighting killing themselves I'm Igbo I'm Idoma I'm thief God bless you continue to be an Igbo man some say I'm a bonny fight Igbo man I'm a bonny fight Nigerian and they are talking with pride no wonder the things that happen to Nigerians happen to you I'm not denying where I came from but I am an ambassador sent to Nigeria I live from Nigeria I'm a citizen of heaven I'm a member of the family of God the Bible said praying to God the Father who is the father of the family that is in heaven and that is on earth Ephesians 3 from verse 14 to 16 I'm part of heavenly family God is my father when Jesus resurrected he said tell them I'm going to my God and their God my father and their father so I am a son of God and I'm an ambassador of Jesus I'm a pilgrim on the face of the earth I'm a warrior that does not entangle himself with civilian affairs I'm a soldier of Christ I'm a witness of the life of God that's what God has made me so if I come to any place where there is lack see ambassadors don't fight for themselves when they have need they call headquarters and anywhere an ambassador is located ceases to be part of that country go to the American Embassy and say you are in Nigeria see the war you will trigger the American Embassy may be situated in Abuja but it's not Abuja that is America the moment you enter there you have entered America if you do anything there you have violated bilateral relationship and it can trigger war do you know you can't arrest somebody inside there so everywhere a Christian is that is heaven but if you don't know you are troubled see if I come here here is heaven and sickness does not exist in heaven poverty does not exist in heaven pain does not exist in heaven so that revelation alone generates power that's why you need to know who your God is and our God cannot lie if he says so that is how it is second Corinthians 5 20 he said now are ye ambassadors of Christ I'm an ambassador I'm a high commissioner 
I represent heaven's interest. And anywhere I show up, heaven show up. See, sometimes you want to manifest the power of God and you are not feeling the anointing. Those of you who are preachers, you know what I'm saying. A revelation must sponsor action that day. And these are some of the things that come into our spirit. I have the righteousness of God. I reign in life. And so there's sickness here. I want to reign. And the sickness will give way. I'm an ambassador of Jesus. Anywhere I come, I introduce the atmosphere of heaven. Sickness can't exist in heaven. And so in the name of Jesus, anything not of heaven, I command you to go. He has no choice but to obey. Revelation. This is why many don't walk in power. You are conscious of your village. You are conscious of your ancestors. They say, ha, this one is a traditional something. No? Uh -huh. The traditional something will come. It will come and make more demands. The way some people exhort Satan. They say, ah, ha, the king of our village. If he talks, rivers will dry up. Oh. Ah, rivers. The other time he spoke, rivers dried. He slapped a tree and the tree dried up. Exhorting Satan. What is a tree drying up? Before he knew that trees dried up, Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He dried from his root. Before they know that rivers can dry, Moses stretched his rod and the river dried up. What are you talking about? Those are elementaries. Tell him to die and wake up. Let's begin from resurrection. Tell your king to die and wake up. Let's begin from there. Because the one we follow, he spoke about it. He said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up again. And the Bible said, on the third day, when they came to the tomb, the tomb was empty. And they were looking for him. Mary Magdalene said to the gardener, where have you kept him? He thought he was talking to gardener. And suddenly he turned and said, Mary. And when Mary looked, he said, Rabboni, the king has risen. The tomb is empty. He's the one that ruled over Hades. And he didn't just defeat death. Before he stood up, all the demons, all the principalities, all the powers ganged up against him. They say, when he was in heaven, we couldn't get him. When he was on earth, we couldn't get him. Now you are in hell. We will lock hell and deal with you here. Ha ha ha. The Bible says, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And when he was done destroying them, he collected the key of Hades. He collected the key of death. And he showed up. He said, all hail the king. All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me you go in that power I'm going in the power of God I'm going in the anointing of God I'm going in the glory of God somebody show God is bigger than cancer. I know there may be poverty. Your God is bigger than poverty. And he didn't just claim to be bigger than them. He destroyed them on the cross. 
he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes we were healed you know the grace of our lord jesus christ rich as he was he became poor that you and i might become rich he destroyed them and he didn't just destroy them he made you a witness you are the proof that everything he claimed is so this is the first anchor of spiritual power have a revelation of your god have a revelation of what he has done for you and have a revelation of who he has made you sit down for a moment oh time thank you father see if this is all you know be intoxicated already be intoxicated these are spiritual legalities nothing can change them every being in heaven knows every being in hell knows only you don't know that's why i say my people perish for the lack of knowledge but tonight you know tonight you know that he made you a king and a priest and where the word of the king is there's what power who can say unto him what dost thou you are a king you are a priest revelation 1 6 where the word of the king is there's what power when i talk there's power not because i'm feeling anything because i'm a king because i'm a priest so power issues out of my words that's what he has made me and then the second trigger for spiritual power is consciousness he said in Galatians, colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 he said if you say you are risen with christ that means if you live at the level of the resurrection the level of the resurrection is a realm beyond the grave it's a realm beyond death it's a realm beyond poverty it's a realm beyond sickness he said if you live in that realm he said let your consciousness let your affection go to verse 1 if you be risen with Christ if you live in the realm of the resurrection he says seek those things which are above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God and I wish I have time here to talk to you about the hand of God verse 2 have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior then say this short prayer Lord I admit I am a sinner I need and want your forgiveness I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love not based on anything I have done cleanse me and make me your child be faithy receive you into my heart as the son of God and as savior and lord of my life from now on help me live for you with you in control dot in your precious name amen congratulations to you if you have just said that prayer you are now a child of God look around you for a Bible believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him consider subscribing to this channel too so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom God bless you